EA Sports brings you a special edition of the National Football League for this Halloween matchup. It's the Denver Broncos and the Baltimore Ravens, and it's coming up next on Madden Football. Built on the side of a former piano factory, there's been plenty of music made on the field here in the decades since it opened back in 1998. Welcome everyone to M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore. Hi there everybody, thanks so much for joining us. You picked a fun one to tune in to. I'm Kate Scouts, joined by former NFL quarterback Brock Heward. And we've got two quarterbacks here, Brock, who are known for playing a very exciting brand of football. Not just throwing the rock. They're taking it themselves, too. Yep, these are two of the guys who really epitomize the direction that this position's going in the modern NFL. Yep. Pocket passers, they'll have their place. They always will. But a lot of teams look to somebody like this as a default. A great passer. But someone who can also mix in plenty of rushing yards and keep that defense honest. To kick off, here's Will. Here's Tylen Wallace on the return. He stopped on the return of the 27. So the Ravens offense taking over for the first time here. And then brought out by the reigning MVP, the second of his career, the best runner in the game, it's Lamar Jackson. Well, what does Lamar Jackson have in store for us this time around? Now a two-time NFL MVP. We know, we know he is electricity personified on a football field. Must see TV. He also knows, and these Ravens do too, that they got to take that final step. Got to get to a Super Bowl and ultimately win it for the two-time MVP. So they're all fenced out now to get this game started. It's first and ten. The drive begins with Henry. And after a little running, he gets this up to the 32. Give him five on that carry, bringing up second and five. Fans love the long ball in baseball. It's like they got the home run derby, but you know what? Talk to managers, and they will tell you small ball can win, too. Singles and doubles, you add them up, you could win a lot of baseball games. Football coaches will tell you, you get runs of that length, it may not be a home run, it may not score points, but it can do some serious damage. Man in motion, out of the slot. This is Henry on second. And this run doesn't have the juice of that last one. He's stuffed at the line. No gain on the play, and it leaves them with third and five. You want to see the term read and react with a little video in the football dictionary? That's it. So now here's third and five. Lamar now from the gun. He's going to push one deep down the right. And he's there to send that one away incomplete. His first target doesn't lead to his first catch. And that leaves them with fourth and five. The ability to track the ball, right? Ball skills isn't just knocking it away, and that's a beautiful job there, Kate. But ball skills is also being able to track a ball on a deeper throw like that. If he doesn't swat it away, we're looking at a huge game. Fair catch hauled in at the 18-yard line. So the Broncos offense getting set for their first drive. They'll be let out by the final quarterback taken in the first round of this year's draft. A lot of experience from Oregon and Auburn. It's Bo Nix. I know technically, Kate, that Bo Nix is a rookie. But, jeez, watching him perform over 61 starts, five years of college football. This is a grown-up. This is an adult the Broncos are getting. So much experience, and he's going to be able to handle such a deep playbook for these Broncos. They're out and set. First and ten. Throw right side, complete to start this drive. And this is pushed ahead for a gain of five. Brandon Stevens in on the tackle. Every once in a while, it's fine to be conservative on first down, especially when you get enough to stay on schedule and get a little something coming out of it, too. Halfway to the marker, it's second and five. Now the first run of the game for Javante Williams. And he'll go down after pushing this up to the 29. They'll see he got five there, but Brock, all they care about is the first down that comes with it. It's got to be so demoralizing as a defense when you go up against a running back who just keeps those legs churning. 
like a piston in an engine. And that effort's contagious. This entire offense is getting a boost when he busts those tackles. That won't be caught outright. It's incomplete. You know, in the NFL, offensive-minded teams would call it a perfect Friday. They don't want the ball to hit the ground once. And especially on these short to intermediate throws, you've got to count on those being efficient and effective. So after the incompletion, here comes the second down call. Nicks from the gun. Bails out of the pocket quick. He made something out of that play for them. Everyone's so concerned with defending the pass, they didn't quite keep tabs on what he was doing as a QB. And it gave him just enough room to run. They come to the line here, and this is third and six. Nick's now to throw. That's caught for the first. And he's out of bounds just past, looks like, the 40-yard line. He manages a gain of eight there. And the Broncos will have a first down. You know, they call that the money down for a reason. Because you're just simply not going to last long in the NFL if you don't convert a good portion of your third downs. It's the money down. And nice to see them roll the dice and continue the series. They'll head up first and ten from the 42. Out of the gun, it's Knicks. And this one's knocked away, incomplete. You know, it's tough to succeed a linebacker in most defenses if you can't hold your own in coverage. They rely on you to break up throws just like that and take some of the stress off the secondary. No dice on that prior pass. Here's second down. Here's Nick's to throw. That's complete. It's Javante Williams. The end result there, 15 yards and a first. At that down and distance, this group was pretty confident the screen would get him enough yards for the first, and it did. And so long as it keeps working like that, I bet you it'll be a go-to play for them when they need it the next time. Opening drive, about to break into field goal range. We get first and ten at the 44. Give to Williams from the gun. And he'll get this down to the 33-yard line. They come through with a nice skin of ten and a first down. I don't know, kid. I didn't think he had it. That back did. He knew exactly where he had to get for the first down. Pops up right away and signals. First down. Great opening drive continues. First and ten at the 33. Shotgun snap to Knicks. Falls to the ground now left. Incomplete. Well, you certainly want those throws to be automatic. Every team. If you're going to be efficient, you've got to hit those passes in the short to intermediate zone to effectively move the ball in this lead. Couldn't connect on first. It's second down. Now Knicks. Defender arrives right as the ball does, and the hit knocks it free. Incomplete. Just couldn't hang on through the contact. So now it's going to be third and long. See the pass, time up your hit, and jar that ball loose. Not a lot of players are hanging on to a well-placed hit like that one. On third down, here's Knicks. Allen falls to the turf, couldn't hang on, it's incomplete. First time this game, they've looked to him. And now they're starting at fourth and long. You know, I'm not sure if he was hearing footsteps or just had a surprise break in concentration. It's so unusual to see one dropped unless there's a hit involved. And this kick is good. He needed to get all of it there, and he did. And that will get them on the board. A lot of them may make it look automatic, but you get this deep, and those field goals are far from a certainty. It took all this concentration, every bit of his strength, to send that puppy through. Hill. Coverage team gets him down at the 26-yard line. 
Now we'll get set to see the Baltimore offense for the second time. And they haven't gotten their legs under them on offense just yet, Brock. Three plays and a punt on their opening drive. Drive starts out with a first and ten. Aguilar, the receiver in motion right. And he won't salvage that. It's a loss on the play. Hey, look, in the right situation, you catch a team off guard. Well, this could be a tremendous play for some big yards. <laughs> but in the wrong situation, you get hit in the mouth right behind the line of scrimmage. Back to the line they go. It's second down. Putting a receiver in motion. Shotgun snap to Jackson. Caught by Flowers. And they'll manage to contain him after that six-yard pickup. Riley Moss with that tackle. You know, Kate, that really is one of the benefits that comes with experience. You'll feel it. Right? Look at the quarterback never seeing the rush, never looking at the rush. Instead, eyes are downfield, and the big play follows. Third and six for them to figure out now. Jackson looking to throw. He'll get this in Henry. Breaks the tackle, green grass ahead. And that's good yardage with a new set of downs. This dude just simply got a nose for the marker no matter how they get him the ball. Kate, hand it to him, and he sniffs out that first down. Get it to him on the screen, and it's no different. He surges ahead and keeps this drive moving. Ball on the 45, first and 10. Jackson's going to throw again. Finding Flowers. And he'll cross the 50 and start pushing onto the opposing side of the field. That is the epitome of staying on schedule. That kind of completion right there on first down. Well, it opens up the entirety of the playbook for second down. And the third and short in your back pocket, you can get even more aggressive and take that shot. Out of the gun, Henry. And he'll have it down to the 44 yard line. A pickup of two, maybe three, but most importantly, Brock, that's enough to move the six. You know what I like about a second and short run play, Kate? Yeah, I like getting a first down, but you know what I like even more? That's going to set up a play-action pass in a similar down and distance, and that defense is going to have to key on the run. On first down, Jackson. Finds a seam down the middle. And they finally bring him down, but that is a big game and a new set of downs. Give him 24 on that play. And that's good for a Ravens first down. <laughs> That is what elite offenses are all about. Why worry about three downs when you need only one? Move the chains in one play and keep driving that defense backwards. First down throw for Jackson. Bateman hauls it in. And they get this down to the seven-yard line. That's a gain of 13, and it sets him up with first and goal. Good offenses. Okay, good play callers know how to utilize their personnel. They know where they wanted him. They wanted him on the route in space where he could make that initial play comfortably, but then go to work after. Motioning the tight end left. They'll run here with Henry. And the Romans find one yard up the gut, second down. Hey, I get it on first and goal, right? A lot of teams like to be conservative and, and limit risk. Even if a run is stopped short, he's still got two, sometimes three downs to play with. Second and goal coming up, five yards to the end zone. They go play fake with Jackson. Flushed out of the pump, trying to get away from the pressure, but he can't, and they drop him. And the pressure drives them backwards. Bend. Bend. Even good defenses, great defenses in this league, Kate, they're going to bend at times, but you never want to break. And when you get a sack in the red zone, well, that goes a long ways to helping your efforts. They've held them out twice. Here we go. Third and goal. 
Out of the gun. Here's Jackson. Escapes the pocket. Duke the defender. You know, that's a really good play. I, I know it doesn't get the first down, doesn't keep them on the field, but what it does is it keeps that defense honest. And I promise you, the next time in that situation, they'll have that run in the back of their minds. Less than a yard, all that's needed on fourth and goal. Running for it, here's Henry. And he's brought down for a loss. And he will not get there. They stop him on fourth and goal. What a stand to force that turnover on downs. These fourth down runs, it's all about want to and will. Want to keep it conservative offensively, try to move it across, but that defense was having none of it. And now they get themselves off the field. So the Broncos headed out for their second drive of the game. And they'll have a little momentum as they take the field here after their kicker drilled a deep one to end their last drive with points. They'll get this drive started. First and ten. Here's Williams to start the drive. And he runs into a wall there. Multiple defenders ready to stop him cold at the line. No progress on first down, and that'll bring up second and ten. These linebackers of today, they are so quick. They're so twitchy. You don't get a body on them in a hurry, they're going to stick you right at the line of scrimmage. Second down, a run with Williams. He's only going to manage to get back to the line. Brandon Stevens in on the tackle. Stuffed at the line a second time, and now it'll be third and ten. As a corner in this league, well, you can go to the Pro Bowl if you can cover. If you want to be an All-Pro, you stick someone like that. Looking at a tough spot to punt it away if this third down is unsuccessful. They stay on the ground with Williams. And this buys him some much-needed breathing room up across the five. Now after the run, we see some trainers headed out for an injured player who was shaken up. Broncos looking at a punt on fourth down, and Ryland Dixon on the handle that. And he gets it away from his end zone. Here before that return amounts to much, they bring him down. Call that a booming 56 yards in the end. And the Ravens more than happy to take over in enemy territory. On the 44-yard line now, first and ten. Blitz coming here, Jackson. That's taken in by Henry. And they make the stop. What are they say about the 37-yard line? These intermediate gains, that's the wheelhouse for these two to connect on. Start the series off well. And it sure keeps the defense on its toes in case they try to load up and just simply cover the receivers. Second and three now. From the 37. Now to his wide out, it's a screen. He has room past the 25. And they catch up to him, but not until he's got a huge gain and a first down. Now about 29 yards on that play, partner, as they get the chains reset. Only a solitary field goal so far as we're through one quarter. Just three to nothing is our score. Back to the bank in just a moment.
Welcome back. Second quarter about to start. Ravens with a chance for at least three, maybe six. And they're going to stop him after he wiggles his way forward for two. Okay, all right. There's a little progress on first and goal. You keep it safe, you push a little closer, and now you're set up for what you want to do on second down. Here's second and goal from the six. Here's Henry on the option. And he will carry this across. And that time, well brought, the ground game paid off. Well, these great rushing attacks down here that can score rushing touchdowns, it takes the whole party getting involved. Yeah, the burst of the running back was tremendous. How about the launch of his blockers right off the line of scrimmage? That's a touchdown the entire way, and it took the entire group offensively. Justin Tucker to try the point after. The point after splits the uprights. And the Ravens take a four-point lead. Tucker on to handle the kickoff. Marvin Mims now to return it. Coverage team gets him down at the 26-yard line. Denver set to take the field on offense. Their last drive didn't make it very far before they had to punt it away, partner. So hopefully this one has some better legs to it. Ready to begin this drive, first and ten. Here's Nix. He lost it, deep left. The disaster averted, he knocks away the deep ball, incomplete. You know, ball skills are not just a selling point for receivers entering the draft. Teams want defenders, especially in this day and age of the passing game, who can make plays on the ball, too, especially on these deeper throws. He doesn't swap that one away. We could be looking at a huge game. Mix again on second and ten. He had it for a moment, but a great defensive play to jar it loose. Incomplete. I think that was a throw, Kate, that just came a little bit too late. What it did is it gave that defense time to come up and deliver a pop and knock the ball loose before he could secure it fully. No connection on the last play, and now it's third down. Knicks. Just got in the way before the hit. It doesn't matter. It's incomplete. Third down. Coming up. Well, that's when you chalk up to the pressure earning that incompletion. They came in before he could find a target, hit him, altered that last second attempt to get rid of it. Riley Dixon on the punt. And he's getting the call for the second time this game. And the sunlight's not a problem for him. He looks up and makes the fair catch. The Ravens and Derrick Henry making their way back out on offense. We don't get a return out of that punt. And the Ravens will go on offense. And the drive will start out with a first and ten. Lamar out of the pistol. Pass into the hands of Mark Andrews. And he's going to get this up close to the 40 before going out. When you see play action, do all you can to get your eyes to the tight end. Because that's their bread and butter. 
That play action gives him time off the line, helps chip a rusher, or even helps sell that fake. And then when he releases, he gets out, he gets some leverage, he gets to that edge before the defender can cover him. From the gun, a run for Henry. And he's just spinning his wheels, man, this entire first half. They drop him behind the line. Kate, it's amazing how fast these guys are on the field and how fast your fortunes can turn. Second and short run, you're feeling good about yourself. But with a negative play, well, now comes a critical third down. They come to the line here, and this is third and six. Jackson to throw it. Henry on the catch. And it'll be out of bounds right along the 40. That's good for seven yards. And that'll be first down, Baltimore. To this day, I can still see the faces of the big guys in the huddle. When you call a screen like that, instead of them just getting knocked backwards, they get to be salesmen. They get to push those linemen downfield and then tee off and go hit somebody like they did right there. Pistol snap to Jackson. to rock this offense looking sharpier in the first half as they extend their lead. You know, and when things are going well, sometimes you really just get into a groove. And this is a unit that's putting the pieces together. Tucker on for the extra point. Right down the middle. It's good. And the Ravens drive their lead to 11. Tucker on to handle the kickoff. Here's Trayvon Smith with the return. This return makes it up to the 25. Denver ready for another offensive possession. And they find themselves trailing by 11 as they take over down 14-3. shots downfield and he collects the fair catch just inside the 35 so no return on that punt and it's gonna be their football coming up now the Ravens all set for another possession and that last drive no answer for what they were doing through the air so expect some tighter coverage this time around
Here's first and ten from the 34. They send the tight end in motion. First and ten. Here's Jackson. Well, the pressure nearly got to him, but still a good play defensively as that one falls incomplete. And this is why scouts talk about a player's closing speed, Kate. You know, once he senses the pressure, he's getting rid of that ball. It takes a player who can close quickly to get to him before it's released. And that sure altered the throw. Second and ten now. Completed to Flowers. And he'll be brought down a step or two shy of midfield. They're going to mark him at the 48. A nice gain of 13 yards as it brings up a first down. That's just great instincts. Go air it out on second down rather than just be conservative and run it. They hit a weak point in the coverage and don't need to worry about third down at all. Throwing now on first down. It's Jackson. Completed over the middle. And he pushes this down to the 42 before going down. They get an even 10 on that play. And that's good for a Ravens first down. I love throwing on first down. And when you see a first down pass just like that, it's taking advantage of a matchup you plan for and you go out and execute. First down, here's Lamar. And the first down pass set away by a defender incomplete. Any DB prefers a highlight real interception just forcing an incomplete pass. But as soon as he realized the pick wasn't possible on the play, he gets his hands on it and made sure it wasn't completed. So after the incompletion, here comes the second down call. Again, it's Jackson to the air. Cut by Flowers. And he's taken down at the 30. 12 yards on that play and a good call and that's him the first. I'm sure, Coach, a play caller doesn't mind making the job a little bit easier. You know, play calling's a lot simpler and easier when you count on the offense to move the chains on those early downs. First and ten now from the 30. Lamar throwing again. Finding Flowers. And he's brought down at the 17-yard line. It's a 13-yard play, and that's enough for the first. Nice to see that connection, that chemistry working between the two of them. A new set of downs forthcoming. It's first and ten. Working inside the red zone. Taken in by Likely. And this one doesn't go far. He's just one of those guys, Kate. Even when he's not open, he's still a target thanks to that physicality and his ability to just play bully ball. They don't like forcing into coverage, but sometimes when you got a bully like him that can create space, you just find a way to get him the ball. They send a man in motion. Aguilar with the grab. And this play reaches the 12-yard line before the stop is made. Here they come. This is third and five. Jackson's going to throw again. The throw is caught. And he'll pick up enough to move the chains. You're not going to last long in the National Football League if you don't convert a good chunk of your third downs. Nice find there to continue the series. They'll break the huddle and come up on first and goal. Give to Henry on the inside handoff. And he powers through the middle for a gain of four. You know, Kate, these are some of the little hidden plays in a game. It right? doesn't look like a whole lot on the stat sheet, but A, it gets a good yardage. B, it sets up your play action. And C, most importantly, keeps that defense guessing. Look at 
the design, run for him there. Coach just tells him, hey, Brock, KQB, do your thing, get a six. Yeah, and these offensive coaches love this play, and defensive coaches hate it, Kate, because it really gives you an extra hat, right, an extra yeah. number when your QB's got the athleticism, got the legs, got the instincts to go run it in for six. A defensive nightmare, an offensive touchdown. Tucker adds the PAT. And the Ravens push their lead to 18. Now Tucker on to handle the kickoff. Here's Smith on the return. team gets him down the 26 yard line so here comes the Bronco offense and this certainly isn't the rut they want to be in Brock all of their drives have been ending in punts as of late drive starts out with the first and ten Shotgun snap to Nix. Now it'll be caught by Troy Franklin. And this one's brought to a halt at about the 36-yard line. There's no routes on the old proverbial rock tree, Kate, that takes more trust than throwing an out route. You're throwing it to a spot and believing your guy can get there. Options are open here. It's second and inches. before going down. It's a meager two-yard gain, but that's enough to award them the first down. That's certainly a spot where you could be more aggressive, Kate, if you want to take your shots. But some coaches, even the bolder ones, will take the safe play first when they get it from time to time. No third down required now. We go with Williams on the counter. And the defense is all over this one for a big loss. Well, he was supposed to be the one who chipped away a few and got a new set of downs started right in rhythm. Instead, he's now forced to pick himself from behind the line thanks to a great effort defensively. Offense to the line for second down. Another run for Williams. He started to get through the lane before it closed. Three yards there. Brandon Stevens in on the tackle. I think one thing you learn, Kate, when you transition from college to the NFL, not every run is going to be a big play. Some of them, well, they're just destined to end in a minimal gain, and some of them will set up that critical play action for later. On third down, here's Nix. Complete beyond the marker. And he's taken down directly on that 43-yard line. That'll go for an 18-yard gain. And that'll be good for a Denver first. I may love watching a great thrower, but I love watching a well-done route too, Kate. Make that guy think you're trying to stack him, only to drop your hips and cut right inside. So good work to help reset those chains. On first and ten, here's Nix. Splits a couple of defenders and completes it. defensive buzzwords, pursue, effort, run him down. Just a total effort defensively to knock that running back right out of bounds and put a negative yardage mark on the stat sheet. I'll throw again, Nix. Got Williams and it's complete. And he's tackled with the first down yardage. That's what we call situational football. You spend all week working on your nickel passing game package to take advantage of third downs just like that. First and 10 now from the 30. 
Now Nicks. Defender arrives right as the ball does, and the hit knocks it free. Incomplete. As a defense, you got to see the pass. you got to time up your hit, and you got to jar that ball loose. Not a lot of offensive players are hanging on the bat one through a well-placed hit. No dice on that prior pass. Here's second down. They are throwing it again. It's taken in by Williams. And two yards is all he's going to get before he's caught. So you see Kane able to make that stop. That's a defense's goal, right, Kate? Just get us to third down so we can have a chance to get off the field. And that was a good adjustment on that stop in particular when the back ended up being the target and they were able to keep him short of the sticks. Along the sideline, he brings it in. They say he got the feet down, too. Excellent work. Pickup of 12 on that play. And the Bronco, now we have a stoppage. No challenges inside of two minutes and a half, but the replay official wants to take another look at this on their own. So what we're all looking for here, did he secure the catch and maintain it while also getting both feet down? Yeah, this is why, it's a perfect look. This is why teams scout body control and field awareness for these pass catchers. For moments like this, he did not have much margin for mm -hmm. error, and it happens oh so fast. They sent it out to New York just to be safe, and the folks there saw enough to change that call. Will Lutz getting the call on fourth down to put three up here for the Broncos. He catched his first attempt, his second now from 45. And that one is good. A little longer, but no problem at all. And that lowers the deficit to 15. Okay, one of the areas that kickers and quarterbacks are similar, they want to get into rhythm. And no better way to feel good and get into that rhythm and start a game two for two as a kicker. Hill now to return it. And in the end, he's able to get it to what used to be a touchback. It's at the 25 after the return. The Ravens and Lamar Jackson are ready to go again on offense. They'll get this drive started. First and ten. Lamar off the play fake. Finds him over the middle. Down the left side, line he goes. And he breaks into enemy territory before being stopped on a huge game. So as we all recover from that last play, it's first and ten near the red zone. Lamar now from the gun. He's got Andrews. And then even ten yards on the play. And that'll be first down, Baltimore. You know, it sure seems like he knew exactly where he was going with that before the snap. That's a pre-snap decision that led to a post-snap first down. All right, set now, first and ten. From the red zone now. This throw is caught. And he's got a decent gain before being brought down. Now we're going to have a timeout taken by Baltimore. It's second. And they still have one in their pocket for what's left of this half. Second and six coming up here. And again, it's Jackson. Pass it down close. And this one stopped at the three-yard line.
Now, just before the break, a timeout taken by the offense. And they can try for some points going into the break. Ravens call in on Justin Tucker for the field goal. Angling this one in from the right hash, the challenge here. And it is good. No problems there on the shorter attempt. And it's a three-score game now, an 18-point lead. In that close, kicks have to be automatic. That won't stop the head coach, though, from holding his breath for a couple seconds until he sees it's up and good. Well, Brock Barn, the touchback. This kickoff should run out the half, so better make that return good as it's away. And it flies over the end zone and out of play. In the past, it's a touchback to the 25. The new rules start in this season, Brock, so it's now going to be at the 30. All right, this is going to be the play that takes us to halftime. send you south to Orlando for a check-in around the league via Jonathan Coachman and the EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, what you got for us? All right, Kate, thanks very much. Back to you and Brock in a bit. But first, time for our EA Sports Halftime Report. The first half belonged to the reigning NFL most valuable player, number eight, Lamar Jackson. He's over 300 yards passing already as he's looking to possibly put his name in the record book. All right, thank you, Coach, and we are back and about set to begin the second half. Now Tucker on to handle the kickoff. On the return, here's Mims. He stopped on the return of the 27. The Denver offense now with the football first to begin quarter number three. And that first half, they just couldn't keep up the pace, but they're going to be the ones setting the pace here to begin this third quarter. Ready to begin this drive, first and ten. Nicks from the gun. Dumps it off to his running back. And he'll get it out to the 34 before he's tracked down. That's what you call efficiency. Exactly what you're looking for in first down. Textbook. It sets up second and very manageable, and it creates that space if you want to take a shot downfield. Second and three now. Second half starts with a run by Williams. And the defense gets there to force a small loss. I talked to a bunch of different GMs, Kate, especially around draft time, and they all say the same thing. Linebackers are so hard to find. It's hard to transition from the college game that's in so much space to this game where you've got to play in the phone booth yet. Have that explosiveness to chase a play on the outside down like that linebacker just did. Has him on the quick hitter. And he'll pick up enough to move the chains. You know, Kate, they say a dog is a man's best friend. A tight end that moves the chains on third down, that's a QB's best friend. First down now, ball at the 39-yard line. From the gun, a carry by Williams. He's got a gain of six there. Chopping that play, Trenton Simpson. Give him around six. That's going to make it second and four. 
This is a guy who, man, when he is in the group, when he is feeling it, you're just not going to bring him down with an arm tackle. You better buckle up. You need a textbook tackle on this guy. Rack, grab some clock, and drive him to the ground with all you got. On second down, it's Williams again. And this almost ended worse, but he gets a yard out of this. Stopped by one of the league's best tacklers, Roquan Smith. Only a yard on the pickup, so that's going to bring them to third down and three. You know, they got some positive yards. That's a good thing. But too many plays like that, it just is too hard to pile together, get first downs, against the better defenses in this league. Now Nick's on third down. Complete to Mims. And that one goes for a gain of 11. And that'll be good for a Denver first. Kid, I can't tell you how good that is. Anticipating the outcut, having the ball on the way before the receiver's head even turns, he puts it on him so that receiver can easily get out of bounds for the nice game. Let's see how they attack this first down drop from the 43. A handoff for Williams, running left. He swarms in the middle. This gets maybe a yard. Stopped by one of the league's best tacklers, Roquan Smith. Only gets a yard there to make it second and nine. Okay, that's a run that's whole hum on the stat sheet, but if you see a bigger play on the ground later on, it'll largely be because of a play just like that one, softening up the front and opening the door for a bigger gap in the future. Makes the grab in bounds left side. And he'll go out of bounds just short of the red zone. It's a gain of 21 yards to pick up that first down. It was such a privilege for me to watch Marvin Harrison and Reggie Wayne in person in Indianapolis do their work. Daryl Jackson out in Seattle. They showed how great a deep out is as a chain-moving play. It's all about getting that leverage at the top of the route and then exploiting the leverage as that ball arrives on time downfield. Now we're on the toss for Williams. And hopefully a bit of a wake-up for their ground game. It's a solid pickup there on the play. Solid four-yard gain there, and now they've got second and six coming up. I don't mind that call on the early downs. Give that defense something to think about. You've got the inside run between the tackles, and whether it's jet sweeps or a little swing pass, or in that case, a toss. Make sure you threaten to the outside. Coming across the line early there. That's an easy call for our officials. He thought he had the timing down and could make the play, but just a hair too early. Everyone's prepped. It's second down now. Out of the gun. It's Nix. The throw is caught. And he'll go down shy of the end zone. They mark him at the four. A nice gain of eight there. And that brings him to first and goal. It sure seemed like he knew exactly where he was going with that right off the snap. Four downs now to get in. Here's first and goal. question about it. He has the license to adapt a little bit, to diagnose plays because they trust his instincts. And there, well, it was all on display. Expert level diagnosis going on to see a potential run and get in position to stop it behind the line. Shotgun snap to Nix. And he gets in. Touchdown, Denver! The Broncos cut into the lead, coming out of halftime. All right, so the offense does its job, Brock. Now they need their defense to give them a chance to overcome that big deficit. The momentum in the building's clearly changed. We can feel it here in the booth, but you're right. It's now up to the defense to make a stop and give them a chance. Will Lutz now on for the extra point. Extra point sent right down the middle. And the Broncos make it an 11-point ball game. Here's Lutz. 
Khan set to kick this away. He'll now to return it. And look at this return. And he'll strike his drive in good position, a little shy of the 40. The Ravens headed back out on offense. Their quarterback returning to the field now. The Ravens in a very good field position as they come up first and ten. They'll start this series with an option left. Escapes a defender. And he made a bid for midfield there, but stopped at his own side at the 49. Had to be a missed assignment somewhere on that play, and the QB capitalizes with an excellent game. There's got to be an adjustment made, so even when the QB keeps it himself on the read option, that gain is minimized. Let's see what they want to do here, partner. It's second and inches. Play action now with Jackson. Bateman holds it in. And he goes down a little short of the 40. They come through with a nice gain there. Gain of 10, first down. They like to say it's about the Jimmys and the Joes. I think that's about the X's and the O's. That's a well-drawn-up completion that nets them a first down. First and 10 from the 41. Brian down the middle of Henry. He still has room inside the 30. And now finally bring him down at the 22. The goal is a gain of 19 yards. And that's good for a Ravens first down. Kate, I know you can see that smile on my face as we stand next to each other. Sure, I love that run. But I'm thinking about some great running backs. In fact, Corey Dillon, who created a lot of negative grades on my play sheet because I didn't want to carry out no fake. I wanted to watch the damage he could do like we just saw. He brings the offense up now for a first and ten. Play fake, Jackson. Short throw is dropped. This one's incomplete. You know, the goal on a lot of these short throws is to simply let the receiver create some yards after the catch, that yak. Well, I think he was thinking about the yak before he actually secured the catch. Couldn't connect on first, it's second down. A give to Henry. He breaks even, but that's it. Brought down at that line of scrimmage. Brandon Jones up for the stop. No gain on the play, and they still need 10 now on third down. So close to a big loss of yards for those guys up front. One second sooner, and they got a tackle behind the line. But a stop to celebrate nonetheless. Jackson now on third. He'll get this to Henry. We've heard it said, and I believe it to my core, football is the ultimate team sport. And a well-run screen like that is the ultimate team play because it takes all 11 doing their job. Offense set for a first and 10. Going with King Henry here. He would not be denied that close to the end zone, Brock. I think it might have taken five or six guys tackling him to keep him from diving across the line for six. Certainly a second effort touchdown, no question. The backs who become fan favorites, we've seen it through the generations, and they set the curve for their peers, are the ones who just fight through that stop. It will not be a denied of a touchdown. Tucker on for the extra point. The point after splits the uprights. And the Ravens push their lead to 18.
Now Tucker on to handle the kickoff. Here's Smith on the return. And this drive will start inside the 25. The Broncos and quarterback Bo Nix gearing up for their next series. They're running out of time to get this game into a more manageable spot, Brock. We've got a three-score deficit, and we're in quarter number three. And the drive will start out with a first and ten. Out of the gun, he'll look to throw. It was there, but he couldn't hang on. That's incomplete. This one misses the tight end. And we'll see what they do here on second down. You know, he might complete 99 out of 100 of the short, simple routes to the tight ends. Even the shortest and simplest of throws, what's well, due to end up in a drop at some point. Mix again on second and 10. It's incomplete. Should have been a catch downfield, but off his hands and to the ground it goes. Oh, that drop is such a bummer because it ruins the payoff of such a well-designed play, Kate. Got the man open, beat the coverage, but then you got to go finish it. you got to go make that catch. I will say, keep that one in mind. They can revisit that play in the future. Team is on now, and they get this away. And he's getting nothing on that return. They wrap him up almost at the exact spot that he fielded that punt. The home teams ready for their next series. Let out on offense by their quarterback. First and ten now from the 30. From the gun, Jackson. Gets this one to Andrews. And they finally bring him down, but that is a big gain and a new set of downs. They manage 22 on the rip and a first down. Just excellent effort on that catch. And a lightning quick transition from bringing that football in to getting vertical. He was not content for a second to end that play where he caught it, uh-uh. Any catch he makes, his intent is to put some serious yards on top of it. One play in, and this drive is already in the enemy territory. They'll put one of the tight ends in motion. First down, here's Lamar. Short pass brought in. And they're gonna bring him down at the 36. That's an 11-yard pickup, and it gives them the first down. Move the chain! Got to move them chains. Build momentum and keep that defense on its heels. First down, ball at the 36. Out of the gun, Henry. And he won't win the race to the outside. That run's bottled up at the line. No game there that time, and it's second and ten. These big D tackles in this league, they love weaponizing their size right in the middle of the field. It is so hard to clear lane against him. And once he got his paw on him, it was dead on arrival. Slot man motioned over. They go play fake with Jackson. Gets this to Bateman. Nothing doing there as he gets out of bounds back at the line. You know, Kate, it's almost as if the defense invited him to make that throw. That was a play they knew they could defend, and they stopped it right at the line. Third and ten. Can this offense get it done? Shotgun snap to Jackson. Taking a big shot for the end zone. And they really went for it on third down, didn't they? But the heave falls incomplete. Now they're facing fourth down. Well, I think the defensive coaches and coverage, 
Woo. I'm breathing a sigh of relief. There was space right there. If that throw came one second earlier, that was going to be six. Staring at fourth down, the Ravens will go with Justin Tucker to try for three. It'll be a 54-yarder from the right hash. And this kick is good. He needed to get all of it there, and he did. And that stretches the lead to 21. That's why they spend all the time on the practice field during the week. That kind of operation. Perfect rhythm, perfect timing, and a two for two for this kicker. Now Tucker on to handle the kickoff. Here's Smith on the return. Oh, he's showing some burst on this return. And he showed some burst on that return, getting them all the way to their own 40. The Broncos running their offense out once again. And I'm sure they're trying to bring it out the punter, Bronc. They're hopefully going to give him some rest this time around and find some points to go after that lead. When you get contributions like that out of your kickoff returner, it is such a boost to an offense. This is about showing no fear. Hit the lane hard, a determined run back, and setting your offense up with great field position. Motioning him from the slot right. Williams now on first and ten. And hopefully a bit of a wake up for their ground game. It's a solid pickup there on the play. It's a four-yard pickup, and that's going to bring up second and six. He'll expect more from himself on those type of plays, but there is nobody that's going to complain about that one. If you can do math, four plus four plus four equals a first down. Second and six now. Mims with the ground. And he's tackled with the first down yardage. Sure seems like he knew exactly what he wanted, and he got it going right where he wanted to with the ball off the snap. First and ten from a yard shy of midfield. Play action with Nix. This is Sutton working the right side. And they're going to bring him down at the 36. A nice gain of 13 yards as it brings up a first down. Three quarters in the books from this one. It's Broncos football as we enter the fourth of what's been a largely one-sided game. First down, ball at the 36. Nick's looking to throw. Splits a couple of defenders and completes it. And this is down to the 28 before the defense halts it. I'll tell you this, you don't want to make a living throwing into double coverage, but double coverage and still finding a way to beat the defense and haul it in. That's not a situation many players win, and a lot of quarterbacks willing to make that throw and trust their receiver to get it done. Now throw again, Nix. Completed over the middle. And he gets this down to the 13-yard line. And it's a pickup of 14 yards as the chains reset. You know, they really love that drag route because he's one of those guys that can count on not only to make the catch, but create after the catch. If they don't close on him quickly, he can add a lot of yards before someone tracks him down. They'll come up first and ten. Straight ahead with Williams. And hopefully a bit of a wake-up for their ground game. It's a solid pick up there on the play. Give him four that time, so six to go on second down. They'll come away happy getting that type of output on most run plays. It's a sign, but they're getting some good push up front, and this running back is seeing the lanes and paying them off. He's got it on the bootleg. Bails out of the pocket quick. He breaks the tackle. Tick, 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 tick. You know, his internal clock right there told him it was time to escape, and good thing he listened to it. He was able to make something out of nothing and at least move them forward. Third and a lone 
kicks from the gun. It's tipped away and he's going to hit the ground through complete. The defender winning that rep. That brings up fourth down. You know, as a QB, I'm going to note that in the back of my head. It's a heck of a break. Knocks the ball away. DBs like that, they tend to also get one hand on the ball. Put a good beat on you and can get two hands on it the next time. Going forward, it's Williams. And his short game gets them a new set of downs. <laughs> That's a pretty clear plan of attack by the back from the very start. Found the lane quickly, didn't hesitate, knew exactly what he needed to get to get past the marker. This offense in position now. It's first and goal. Here's Nick to throw. And he gets in. Touchdown, Denver. The Broncos get it back to within two possessions. A second touchdown through the air for him, Brock. And independent of the game situation, we both know he's going to be happy to leave the field with two of them in one game. One touchdown, you just might be right time, right place. But two touchdowns in a game is always about the preparation. The separations of the preparation. Mm -hmm. It's doing that work on the practice field and knowing before the game that when my number's called, I'm going to be there to deliver. Extra point try now from Lutz. Right down the middle, it's good. And the Broncos get it back to a 14-point game. Set to kick this away. Yeah. Wallace with a return here. Well, have decent field position to begin with here, Brock. He's tackled just beyond that 30 yard line. We see the Ravens making their way out now. And they're already up by two scores, Brock, but another one here would really put this one out of reach. They've got first down from the 31. Out of the gun, here's Jackson. Finding flowers. And that's good yardage there with a new set of downs to boot. And those are the completions they rely on from their passing game. Let's see how they attack this first down, Brock, from the 43. Oh, he taps it quick to the receiver coming across here. And he's brought down for a loss. You know, for pitchers, you know, you'll hear them say, gosh, you got to pitch this guy backwards. For defenses, you got to do the same at times, Kate. You just can't always run it on first. You got to mix in some high percentage pass plays. Otherwise, you're going to get hit right in the face for a loss just like that. Lamar off to play fake. He's got it to him yet again, and that one is caught. And they get this down to the 44 before he stopped. Given 15 yards on the pickup there. And that'll be first down, Baltimore. Well, that is pretty darn impeccable timing between the two. They hit a curl route of that length. It takes great anticipation and precision by the quarterback and the receiver on the other end finishing it, doing his job. From the 44-yard line now, first and 10. Now a run with Henry. And he takes this down to around the 39 before he stopped. Halfway there on first down, that brings up second and five. A humble five to six yard gain on the ground. Not a huge gain. Not a game changing play by any means. But one that keeps you on schedule and takes some of the starch out of that front seven.
Here's second and five. Has him on the quick hitter. And he's able to get this to the 32 before going down. That one gains seven. And that's good for a Ravens first down. Well, they got him down before he could do any more damage in terms of yards. And that's no easy job, mind you, tackling a big tight end. But the main damage had already been done. He kept this drive going by getting beyond the line of game. On first and ten, it's Jackson. That one falls to the turf, couldn't hang on. It's incomplete. Looked like a bit of a concentration drop on that one. And that'll bring up second down. I'm not sure if he was hearing footsteps or he just had a surprise break in concentration. It's so unusual at this level to see a drop pass unless there's a hit involved. Lamar now from the gun. He intercepts it. That is exactly what they needed. And the Broncos have some new life in the fourth. Short throw to the sideline, partner. Normally works for them, right? Yep. But a cornerback lying in wait that time jumps in to make the pick. Those sneaky corners, Kate. You always got to keep your eye on them. Offenses love this area of the field because they're easy completions. But as a QB, you got to use your eyes. You've got to look that corner off. Otherwise, he's going to jump the throw and get that easy INT. The Broncos' offense all set to go. And I think they'd be content doing everything the same as their prior drive and getting another touchdown here. They're out and set. First and ten. Here's Williams to start the drive. And he's tackled after gaining a handful. First down play, nets him five. It's going to be second and five. That run's not going to turn many heads, but at the end of the year, I promise you, if you average over five yards a run, you could be a pro bowler. Halfway to the marker. It's second and five. Shotgun snap to Knicks. And he won't get it there. Defender finds the throw and breaks it up. Trying to force one through there. And it'll be third and five coming up. I know a DB in the stat sheet loves to see INT and not PBU. But as soon as he realized a pick was impossible, he does the next best thing and knocks it away. Now Nick's on third down. He's on the move. Oh, he was on the move and so was the defense. And they take him down. Pretty impressive, isn't it? They built this type of lead for themselves because that's actually, Kate, their first sack of the game. And that's why smart front offices and complete teams build a well-rounded roster. That way, if a core component like the pass rush today isn't there, well, the other areas of the team pick each other up. Fourth and 14. Let's see if they've got some magic in them. Out of the gun. It's Knicks. That's cut beyond the marker. And he flips the field for them before being taken down. You know, Kate, we often talk about flipping the field in special teams, right? A, a kick return, a good punt. Well, an explosive play like that does the exact same thing. Look at the difference in field position. By hitting on that shot, you've totally flipped the field and the tone of this drive. Down inside the 40 now with a first down following that last play. Throwing here, Knicks. It's incomplete. Risky throw to the sideline. They're lucky that defender didn't keep on going down the sideline there. It's going to be second down. Gosh, you could just almost feel his eyes up here, Kate, getting huge, right? He was envisioning the return, and he simply dropped it. Got to secure that pick before you think of anything else. Knicks again on second and ten. Doesn't have the hook up there. Incomplete pass. Well covered on that play. Really not a large window for him to sneak that throw in. Last pass 
That's unsuccessful, and they have third down here. Now Nix. Getting out to his left. He'll make a bid for it on the ground. Well, this is a every quarterback's tool belt. Even the ones not regarded as the best movers and shakers. But, Kate, to play QB in the league today, you've got to be able to do this. If you've got nobody open, still get some positive yards with your legs. Lengthy fourth down try here. They need six. Out of the gun, he'll look to throw. Flush down out to his left. He's running for it. He wisely avoids contact, sliding down there. That played good enough for a first. How about 19 yards on fourth down, and the color go for it pays off considerably. You know, Kate, back in the day, we had a slip and slide of practice for moments just like that. Actually practicing how to slide and get out of harm's way. Nice gain on the play. And denied that defense yet another chance to take a shot on him. That is normally a gimme for this offense, these short throws. But the defense, well, they had just enough influence on that play to force the incompletion. So after the incompletion, here comes the second down call. On the handoff, this is Williams. And he's brought down a little short. No, actually they do give him the 10-yard line. They get about four there, need a little more than that now on third and six. You make that call to just give yourself a fighting chance on third down, Kate. Take at least a little bite of the big deal between them and the first down marker. And that, that should make this upcoming call a little less daunting. And he has it in the end zone. Touchdown, Denver. The Broncos now within one score in the fourth. Well, Brock, you know this better than most. Sometimes these dudes can be a quarterback's best friend, finding the tight end in the end zone for six. And it really has been that way for decades when you think about it, Kate. From John Mackey to Tony mm -hmm. Gonzalez to Travis mm -hmm. Kelsey, the position could be such a mismatch when you're throwing for the end zone. So here come the Broncos. Big spot now as they try for two. He's throwing for it! Successful. That's a little momentum builder as they attack this deficit. Oh, it's a favorite of NFL teams and armchair quarterbacks alike, partner. The quick slant. It is so tough to defend that close to the goal line, and this time it works for two. It sure is. It's one of those plays that I think Bart Starr was running in the 60s, that oh, slant oh, route. Whoa. When you incorporate it with the threat of a fade as well, that's when it becomes so effective. But you get inside that DB, you show the quarterback your numbers, and it's almost automatic for a two-point conversion. chains 36 yards in the end those unsung heroes those big guys up front on the old line well let's give them a little love right here Kate. they don't always get the attention they deserve on a broadcast but let me tell you they played a huge role in that big old run first down here's lamar flushed out of the pocket on him quick and they bring him down 
And the big play drives them backwards. Second down coming up. And right there is the danger, Kate, when you put the ball in the air. How many times do we see these coordinators when you get a nice run, right? You gain some steam on the ground, you stick with the ground game. They don't, they call the pass, and the defense reacts and reacts well with a sack. And they'll let the clock run all the way down and expire. Must have lost sight of the play clock there, Brock, because the quarterback could have snapped it in time, but instead, they take the penalty. All right, here we go. Second down. Trying again, following the set. Dialing up a receiver screen. And the defense gets there to force a small loss. That's the two-minute warning here from Baltimore. Ravens leading by six. Defense looking to defend the marker on third down. From the gun, a run for Henry. He's stopped at the 31-yard line. So quickly, the defense burns a timeout here. 157 remaining in the game. Justin Tucker out for the field goal. A lot of pressure hovering over this kick. Ball on the right hash, 48 yards out. And that one is good. A little longer, but no problem at all. And that'll make it a two-score game. The best kickers I've been around here over the last few decades, they relish these moments. They know the hard work all their buddies on offense and defense have done. And when they can make it a two-score game and be clutch when it matters, these are the moments they live for. Now Tucker on to handle the kickoff. Here's Smith on the return. And he's going to make this to the 28 before going down. The Broncos are being led back out there on offense by their quarterback. And as we're reminded of some of the highlights of this game, his touchdowns ranking quite high among them. We're going to see three of them here. And if you're scoring like that, Brock, it normally means you've had a pretty darn good game. Starts out with a first and ten. Here he is to throw. Short pass brought in. And he's up to the 35-yard line as they reel him in. That is a textbook first down completion. Sets up second and very manageable. It creates space to take that shot downfield. Broncos have to hurry here. Clock still running. Now to throw. Nothing there left side as it ends up incomplete. Looking for his wide receiver there. And now they'll face a third and three. That play right there, Kate, that just goes to show you, you can't take any completion for granted. Even some of the shortest passes in the game plan. Throwing now. He goes back to him yet again. Complete. And he'll go down, and we'll say right at the 39-yard line. It's a gain of four. And the Broncos will have a first down. That pitch and catch won't show up as a big play on the stat sheet, but it gives his own defense a little time to rest. It gives an offensive coordinator a new set of downs to work with. And he just hucks this one away. Wasn't going to risk a throw or force something. It brings up second down.
looking to throw it. Try and push it deep downfield. And the defender redirects that deep shot. Nicely done. Incomplete. I don't fault the look downfield at all. I mean, that's just a situation there where it's a better defensive play than the offense executing. No connection on the last play, and out third down. To throw. Finds him on the crossing route. And they catch up to him, but not until he's got a huge gain and a first down. It's a new set of downs for him at the 32. Next with it on first. Broke him out right as the defense got to him. That's an incomplete pass. Well, he needed another second to deliver the throw he wanted to. You've got to give a lot of credit that time, Kate, to the pass rush for getting in and forcing him to dish it before he was ready. No dice on that prior pass. Here's second down. No throw again. Nix. Anticipated the quick staccato pass there. It's knocked away. Incomplete. Portland Sutton, the man he was after. And that's going to leave him with a tough third and long. With all due respect to some of the great linebackers back in the day, to play the position today, man, you've got to be versatile. You can't just be a come up and stuff the run. You got to play coverage. And these defenses more and more rely on you to break up throws just like that. And he just gets rid of this one, but unfortunately, that means fourth down coming up. There's a situation where he got the time in the pocket he needed. There just wasn't anyone open to throw to. It got to the point he had two choices as that clock is going off in his head. Force the throw and risk the pick, or just get rid of it and cut your losses on the play. down the heart of the lane and it's good and it pulls him back within one score here in the fourth he got the job done kate that one is good now i think we all ask the question that they're probably asking on the headsets with one timeout remaining will they try an onside kick or will you rely on your defense and try to pin him deep Less than 25 seconds to go. This onside try is for the game. And this is going to be recovered by the Ravens. And they're moments away now from celebrating a win. No question they wanted the ball back late. But you don't see many of these recovered by the kicking team in the NFL. You see even fewer recovered when they're actually expecting it like they certainly were right there. The home teams returning their offense and this running back to the field. And I think we can agree the plan to keep him out of the end zone it hasn't quite worked so well for this defense, at least not yet. He scored twice, really being the one his group can turn to for a spark or a big play when they've needed it. Into the victory formation they go, Brock, here on first down. The Ravens in victory formation and content to just need this one out. Now the Broncos take their third and final timeout. That's all they had, so the offense free to start running the clock down now. A kneel down here, and they can start to celebrate this win. With the win in hands, they'll take the knee and let this clock run out. Nothing left to do now, Kate, but celebrate on one side and watch on hopelessly from the other. What a hard-fought effort to get to this spot, and now you can enjoy the victory. The 
This is the type of game everyone was hoping they'd see when they entered this stadium, Brock, you and I included. A close one that went all the way down to the final whistle. And Kay, this is one of the bigger adjustments a college player has to make to the NFL. In college, you get a lot of blowouts. The NFL, every game you get calloused because mm. you know more often than not, they'll be like this, a one possession game. It's not about how you start. It's all about how you finish.